Ignition sequence start. Three, two, one. Houston, we have a problem. We have a problem. We got to go on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. What you're seeing here is a mirage. Are you ready? Debate fans, are you ready? For the handful in attendance and the thousands watching across the world, brought to you tonight by Jaronism, the number one YouTube channel in all of existence. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Make sure your argument is tight, baby. What? You must have proof if you're so right, baby. What? Don't get this fist on false claims because you got to bring the truths in the back. It don't matter if you're talking about racism, sexism, scientism, paganism, socialism, communism, talk about capitalism, atheism, globalism, what about creationism, it don't matter what the ism, live on debateism. And welcome everybody to another episode of Debateism. We are on to episode number 20. Believe it or not, it is McToon, MC Toon against Vika uh, Draziv. I think I got that right. Well, I'm not sure. We'll ask him here in a second. We are arguing on the shape of the earth tonight, so let's uh, see what's going on with the guys. Let's bring them on. Very happy to have them join me. We've got MC Toon and Vika. So MC Toon, welcome to the show. Say hello to everybody. I'm sure they're happy to see you. Hello, everybody. Glad to be here. Awesome. And we've got uh, first-timer Vika on the show. Vika, go ahead and tell us who you are. Hope you're on mute, buddy. Just hit the unmute button in the lower left there. And you should be all right. Hey, everyone, yeah. this is Vikas Razi. Thanks for the invitation here, and thanks, Michael, too. Yep, all right, pleasure to be here. Happy to guys, happy guys. Let's go with the uh coin toss to start us out here, and we'll let Vika go you ahead can, and pick it. You can go first, uh, Michael. So I right. can go first. Yep, Mike, do you accept right. that? Sure, all right, that was easy. No need for uh, the so what what's the first thing? Is that um that's the questions, right? Well we're gonna go with the but intro. But we first. have an intro, right? Yeah, intro. Do we so have an intro? Three minutes of intro when you're ready. Oh. All right. My intro will will be pretty simple. Uh the earth is a globe. Thank you. Uh no, I'm a little more. Uh, I'm MC Tune. I have a, a channel MC Tune Live where I do debates. I'm currently streaming this live there. And I uh do also pre-recorded videos on my conspiracy tunes channel. So conspiracy tunes spelled with a z at the end uh go on over there and and uh, find those um i've been debating uh uh geez in april it's it's uh it's five years since i've been debating so glad glad to be here thanks jaron looking forward to it uh we'll, we'll see how it goes beautiful all right and we've got uh vika you got three minutes when you want to start go ahead we'll start the clock all right so there's nothing more powerful than the idea whose time has come. And this is precisely why I find myself here. Like to champion the authenticity of Earth's true cosmology. A heartfelt gratitude to Jaren for the invitation and kudos for his commendable efforts for the FE community. And special thanks to Michael for accepting this venture. I'm Vikas Razi, producer and director of two compelling flooded documentaries. On his flight on the curve, he explores testimonies of Air Force pilots, Marines, who testify Earth stationary nature. And the second one is called the Mechanical Realm, which delves into Antikythera mechanism, presenting a geocentric stationary model. Plus, I do a weekly podcast called Heliopsychosis. My unwearing st stance is geocentric, asserting the Earth's stationary nature without implying a spherical shape. Surprisingly, not all flat earthers may concur when I emphasize the significance of the sky in proving our Earth's immobility. In my view, the correct sequence is geocentric, stationary, and then level realm, because no diploma degree can alter the fundamental nature of water or land, turning into a, a curvature. This is why the sky 
and its luminaries become a paramount in dismantling the globe. While the proponents of the globe engage in a pseudoscientific discussion about the celestial entities and the phenomena as light shares away, the sky and its luminaries plays a crucial role in providing us with tangible information. From timekeeping seasons, equinox, solstice, lunar phases, eclipses, to the intricate dance of the constellation, astrological alignments, and navigational aids. In essence, the sky becomes a comprehensive tool in demolishing the globe theory in one fell swoop. My question and claim will be around these topics, Earth is geocentric, not heliocentric. Electric, electromagnetics, and electrostatics go on the run, not gravity. Moon is not a sphere. Phases, lunar, solar eclipses is not due to the Earth or moon being in between and creating shadows. And ancient text, math, science, archaeology, astronomy, ancient technologies, instruments are all based on geocentric stationary level realm. And last but not least, antiquitra mechanism being a 2000 year old technology, a geocentric stationary level Earth model. Thank you. All right. Awesome. Thank you, Vika, for that. And if anybody's interested in debating, you can go to uh, t.me slash debatism, or you can email debatism at Outlook, and that will get you in contact with us. And you can either select a partner or tell us you already got one, and we'll get you on the show. So we'll do that. And all right, let's go into the next section, which is for questions. And I guess, Toon, you'd be going first. You can go ahead and ask your first question of Vika. All right. <clears throat> Vika, please show how the path of totality for solar eclipses are predicted using the geocentric stationary level Earth model. For example, April 8th, 2024 is coming up. Cool. The prediction of the path of totality, totality for solar eclipses within the geocentric stationary level Earth model involves a comprehensive consideration of various factors. When addressing a specific date, such as April 8th, 2024, it's important to emphasize that the accuracy of the prediction relies on a detailed simulation or animation or a projection or a physical instrument. It's crucial to question the globe Earth's source of prediction and inquire whether there is a simulation, CGI or animation or an instrument that accurately depicts the entire model in real time. This includes ensuring all the celestial bodies are correctly positioned and located. The inquiry extends to understanding the constellation within which the eclipse is anticipated to occur. Is there more time for me or I can continue? But... You can ask for an extra minute if you want an extra minute here. Do you need one here? To answer I'm that? all right. I'm good. Okay, Tune, did you have any rebuttal or did you have a minute to talk about that if you want um well yeah i i, I didn't show i mean uh, how, how was how was the path of uh, totality predicted using the uh your, your model no my 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 answer is saying that where is your prediction coming from because that's it's not only the importance of where the shadow is falling it's more important all the data together to be that prediction accurate Okay, just drawing a line on a globe or uh, on a textbook showing a line and showing that this is a prediction is not enough because if you got the time, hour, date, in which constellation is going to be, in which luminaries, where they're going to be, their positions, if you have all that information, it's not very extraordinary to predict a line or a shadow on the globe. So, okay, so you don't, you don't have anything. Okay. Okay, let's go with your first question, Vika. Cool. My first question was... Give me a second here. No problem. Uh, you go ahead whenever you start already. Let me know. Yeah, that was a simple one. Just explain heliocentric, uh, geocentric, and how it shows that it's spear and moving in the word geocentric. Uh, Again, well, I'll, I'll explain. Explain the okay. word geocentric, especially Earth being a spear and rotating 
in your model or in geocentric model. So yeah, explain the word geocentric to me. Okay. Well, um, in in uh, I don't think that the Earth is geocentric, so uh, it doesn't apply to to what I think about things. Um, but geocentric generally people take to be that the earth is a globe and that it doesn't move. That's generally what people mean when they say geocentric. But I know others others have a different meaning. Sometimes they, they mean it can be flat as well, but geocentric, which generally means not moving. Um, but but the kind of the, this, the common vernacular in English, at least, is uh, when you talk about geocentrism, um, the people that that hold that model say that the earth is a globe, that gravity exists, that the sun is 150 million kilometers away. Um, just that the earth is stationary and the sun orbits the, the, the earth instead of the other way around. That's what it generally means. Um, so, but I, I don't think that's the case. Uh, I think that the earth uh, and sun orbit the very center of the earth's sun system, uh, but it's close sure. enough to say heliocentric instead of barycentric. I don't need to get pedantic on that. All right. Was that sufficient, Mika, for his? Cool, that, cool. But the geocentric, the term just the geocentric, there is nothing it's showing that the Earth and in the physics of globe, it's too big. Right. The sun is too big to go around the Earth. Right. The whole thing changes because this term even doesn't fit in in the globe science. Yeah, I, I agree. Geocentrism is silly. I don't agree with it. But. No, it's not about yeah. silly. It's 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 literally the word which is telling you geocentric Earth center, and with the yeah. North Pole in the center and going around centric to what? If the Earth is center, center to what? I don't right? know. To, to the North my... Pole, right? To, to the vortex, to the to the North Pole. For for that for that reason, it's called North Pole, right? Polaris, right? All right, that's we can go to the next one. Okay, right? tune your second all right. one. All right, all right. Uh, show how electric and electromagnetic, those are the words you use, predicts the specific approximately 9.8 meters per second squared downward acceleration. All right, because just because I said I wanted to speak about electric, electromagnetics or aerosta electrostatics, that doesn't mean that was right, that it means all what I'm saying go with that, right? My the question should be what is your 9.8 meter in my our model, right? Okay. The acceleration of objects falling to the ground measured at 9.8 doesn't represent mere uh, quantification or a measurement. Okay, rather it's a sign signifies a negative acceleration along the vertical axis of up and down. It is derived from the rectilinear uniform acceleration. The rise or fall of objects is influenced by mass, resulting in diverse speeds across the different mediums. This phenomena is simply the acceleration of descent. So the vertical axis plays a crucial role in both negative and positive acceleration, as well as dynamics of pressure and push this term gravity originates from the word gravitas, right? De denoting okay, time. You quality want of weight. It's done? Yeah, Object you... fall due to their own... Give me a few seconds. You Just can ask, I'll seconds. give you an extra minute here. Go ahead. Okay. Objects fall due to their own weights in any medium, not solely because an external force is propelling them to the ground. Nature seeks e equilibrium in densities and pressures with bodies and objects reaching equilibrium where their relative densities equals or is inferior to that of the surrounding medium. The interplay of negative and positive values and the two axes involving density and buoyancy explain atmospheric phenomena such as ocean winds, clouds, atmospheric circulation and ocean currents. I could continue, but you have 20 yeah, seconds. I think I'm out. Yeah, I'm done. Okay. Uh, Mike, you have any come back to that? Um, okay, so nothing. All right, that's good. Okay, uh, then we've got your second one, Vika. And by the way, just so everybody knows, you get you each get two extra minutes if you need it. So Vika, I just give you that one, and then you can use a two minute takeover at any time. Just wave me down, and you'll get to mute the other person for two minutes if you want to use that at any point. Can use it whenever. Vika, ask your second question. I have it here for you too, if you need. 
Do you have any experiments which demonstrates uh, moon is a sphere? All right. Um, I'm sharing my screen. Do you get that, uh, Jaron? Uh, yes. Sorry. Yes, I would do. I'll do it one second. Yeah, go ahead. All right. So, um, <clears throat> all right. The moon does not perfectly face the earth. It varies through both the month and year. This is called lunar libration. We see it. We see more than 50% of the moon as it librates. Uh, here are um, uh, 20, 20 pictures of full moon between May 2025, uh, 20, 2005 and December 20, uh, 2006 by Laurent Lavadere. I don't know, he's French. Uh, this shows that the moon varies in distance and that the edges, we view the edges and we can they, they change. Um, and then here's a zoom in on it. Let me see, I can probably give you a little better, a little closer view. So there you can see on the top of those three there, this is a zoom in on the edge there. You see on the top that uh, Mayor Humboldt, I don't know, whatever that pronounce, that uh, that <laughs> that that uh, ocean, as they call it is, that's you can see it rather well. And then that that middle one there, you can see it's being um, distorted a little bit in view. And then in the top, you cannot see it at all. So this is a close up of the libration. So you can see uh, that that uh, the edges of the sphere of the moon when you when you zoom in on it. So there you go. There's an experiment that shows that the the moon is a sphere. Do you have anything you want to say back to that? All right. Well, these are from uh, some sites, right? Just some from sites, some images, right? I'm gonna yes. I'm gonna yeah, share some. Are, I'm gonna share something uh, for, yeah. uh, as an experiment. Uh, let me see. How can I share the video? Uh, down at the bottom, you'll see it says share screen. There should be a green button in the middle. There you go. Okay, we oh, see your screen so, now. Oh, oh. Okay. If it's got sound, we might not hear it, but we'll try it. No, no, it's no sound. Okay. Go ahead, we're watching. It just takes a few seconds to load. Just give me... Okay, so here's an experiment anybody can do to show without even going to the moon or just with images that the, how the shadow, the shaping factor, you know, how the way the shadow falls on something shows what's the surface. You see how it, see on the curve, it shows the curved surface. If it's a ball, it goes like this. So the same way. And you've got just a second. The light diffusion factor, the light diffuse, right? When the shadow falls on an object and the way the shadow falls, it diffuses and shows the shape of the object it's falling on. It diffuses on the end, okay? And the last is the sine wave factor. You see, if, the, if there is really moon is a sphere, this is the shadow we should see on the moon, but it's not like that. If it's a sphere, having a shadow on a sphere, that should be the effect too. But it's not what we see. Anybody can do that. And I think if uh, the Globers can show us something, this is without going to the moon, you can see that, right? And it says a lot. It not only shows that the moon is not a sphere, but it's also telling that it's not the earth. That is, whatever it is, it's not the earth, right? Because if you think it's a ball, is the shadow shouldn't be like that all right i'm done with this okay time <laughs> and we've got uh your third question i believe right mike uh yeah okay go ahead all right what specifically causes the moon phases all right just a second because i'm trying to close stop my i did it for you cut all right cool What causes the moon phases, right? Yeah. I don't know. There are different versions of flat earthers also explaining the moon, right? And what could be. Um, 
in examining the causes of the moon phases and eclipses brings attention to the role of uv radiation emitted by the sun the sun could be seen as a bulb a light bulb and the moon could be seen as a fluorescent tube uv light ultraviolet radiation and the moon charges itself and depending on the percentage of its charges it glows right apart from that the sun is also taken into account the factor of the sun sun's angle that's the second factor which is taken into account and the third factor is the vortex the electromagnetic fields of the earth so three these three factors and which makes the moon phases the way it happens it's nothing that the earth or other whatever the global says is coming in the middle okay tune any comment on that or um i'm i'm anxious to hear how the magnetic field does it but uh that's for a, a future discussion i think so yeah thanks oh we, we will we will uh, see that maybe in the next in the claims part yep okay okay great and then awesome. uh vika your last question my last question was uh did you consider the a uh, watch, a clock or a watch, a scientific instrument capable of doing precise calculations? Um, I think a watch or a clock is not is not generally doing calculations, but it does a, uh, a fantastic job at the high quality of, of uh, measuring time. But if you want to, it depends on how you're going to use the word calculation. I suppose you could, you could bend the word a little bit to mean that, but I wouldn't put it into the category of calculations. There are certainly mechanical devices that can do calculations. Um, the uh, the Enigma machine, for example, in World War II was a a, a mechanical computer. So a, a good example of it. Okay, awesome. So so also that the people have idea right uh, about why this question is. You have the second hand of the watch or a clock move 60 times then the minute hand moves 60 times in turn the hour hand moves right it's a gear ratio of doing calculations for precise measurement and calculation right that's what a, a chronometer or a clock or a watch does right so that's it i'm good okay excellent let's move on to claims and i believe it's going to be you going first uh tune so go ahead and go with your first claim so with this section is for they got two minutes to make a claim and back it with evidence and then we will uh, have a one minute rebuttal and then possibly a conversation after that so go ahead you got two minutes when you're ready all right two minutes hold on a second let me share my screen coming up here okay um all right so you got that got it all right so um the eclipse predictions using the globe so the time location duration and path of totality the amount of totality the amount of coverage for eclipses are precisely predicted using the globe and positions of the earth moon and sun in the solar system none of this is predicted based on flat earth uh the earliest eclipse i'm aware of where they predicted the path of totality was 1715 by edmund halley and he he got very close he's about 20 miles off at the most and then he he updated his methods and improved his precision for the 1924 eclipse he was significantly closer for that one that sparked a rash of people doing eclipse predictions using the globe and the distance between the moon and the sun and the moon and the earth um, bunches of them came in the following years today we we use uh we have uh one of the most prolific predictors is Fred Espinak, and he uses the VSOP 87 and ELP 2000 ephemerides to do that. I'll cover what both of the, those are. I have one of those books myself right here. Uh, the first one, the 2021 to 2020 or 2030 eclipse catalog. Uh, he has predicted the cattle um, eclipses for 5,000 years. You can download the the uh, the PDF of that, if you're interested, on his website, EclipseWise. So how does he do it? Well, VSOP 87 is an ephemeris of the positions of the planets Mercury through Neptune in the solar system, uh, including the Earth, and it has a specific additional 
uh, ephemeris uh, catalog for the Earth Moon Berry Center, which is a little different than the Earth uh, Alone position. That's what one of the rows looks like. Here's what one of the uh, the, the Fortran program that came with it um, looks like. I I did I have done uh, have written software in Fortran. It's been a long time, and and I don't miss it. Uh, and then ELP 2000 is also an <coughs> ephemeris specifically about the position. Am I, am I over time? Can Your I get time. another? You can have a minute. minute. Go ahead. Uh, all right. Positions of the moon in relation to the earth. There's a couple of notes in there. You can get, you can get this, uh, down, download this yourself. It uh, specifically lists the mass of the earth, the mass of the moon and the sun, the distance and the bottom right there, 384,000 kilometers is the distance between the Earth and the Moon, and it has different uh, distances because the distance varies because of the elliptical orbit of it and tidal forces. And then this is the output of the uh, those calculations there. This is a it's much it goes way off the screen there, but this is the details of the positions that that the Sun and Moon will be for different positions on the surface of the Earth. You take that, you plug it into a map, and then you get. Um, this kind of animation is what you get when you plug those into a map. Um, I can speed that up a little bit there. So, and this is for the eclipse coming up. So uh, if it's right, then when I drive myself to Texas, I will see the eclipse at the exact minute that it says. It's it's down to the second, Time. actually. So there you go. Okay. Vika, you got a minute to rebut that? You're on mute. Sorry. No problem. Go ahead. Just predicting the, predicting the eclipses doesn't make the Earth a globe. There are many other predictions that the Earth needs to, a globe model needs to present for the whole model, complete model. Because why it's just the eclipses? Why not other cycles and other alignments and all the luminaries, their right positions? Right? Why is not there a digital version of what you showed, but a complete model seen from not just uh, a simulation, which could uh, in the even the simulation is showing the stretch the way you are sh showing that stretch. We are not seeing that on the Earth, uh, on the Moon, right? So shouldn't it be the reverse effect? If the Earth is having a shadow of the Moon in the same way. It should be the same shadow on the moon, like how it's in the simulation, but that's not the case. So what I'm trying to say is that it's not only the eclipses. There are so many other observations that our model does. It's not only about eclipses and its path, okay. right? There is so many other things. Time, you can have an open conversation about that if you want for a couple of minutes. Yeah, hey, that's that's a that's a good question. Um, well, VSOP 87, as I, as I mentioned, plots the positions of the planets Mercury through Neptune. There are other ephemerides. Uh, the J JPL has um, uh, its DE400 series that, that plots all the planets, including uh, the, the formerly planet Nept uh, Pluto and several other things like asteroids. Uh, all of them plotted in three-dimensional space in the solar system. And you, if you want to look at a, a three-dimensional model of them in a computer program, I think Universe Sandbox does that. There's there's a couple of them that you can actually use those ephemerides to look at the positions of those objects in three-dimensional space. So yeah, all of those, as you as you as you want, as you wish, Vika, are all available. Um, and and uh, the, most of them are free to download They're on some of these uh, apps are free to download. Of course, all of the, the data from yeah, NASA love to, is free. I'd love to see. I'd love to see if it's in real time observation and that it really corroborates with what is seen above. Because as yeah. I said, it's not only about eclipse. It's the time, date, month, zodiac, the position of the sun, absolutely, the, yeah. the moon, the luminaries, the phases, the lunar and all the solar them. eclipses, the penumbral, the total, the partial, the equinox, the solstice. That it, yeah, and then after those. that, yep, okay, we will see. Oh, we will 100%. See and, and, but also, also the other cycles like sidereal, the tropical, the metonic, the saros, the caliphus, the yeah. salamos, right? Also, yeah, timekeeping, no, right? Them. Okay, we'll see that. Awesome. Okay, Bika, go ahead with your second, or sorry, your first claim. You got two minutes, tell me whenever you're ready. My first claim. All right. 
ask you. I assert that the Earth is geocentric, then heliocentric, going by electric, electromagnetics, and electrostatics forces instead instead of gravity. The governing forces shaping Earth's dynamic are centered around electricity, electromagnetics, and electrostatics, challenging the conventional understanding of gravity. This claim aligns with observable realities such as our perception of the magnetic North Pole characterized by round magnets and toroidal field interacting or interactions between the sun and the moon, and well as the phenomena like uh, storms, tides, and earthquakes. Find the explanations in these electromagnetic principles. Key experiments and inventions further support this perspective, including Tesla's experiment with the Tesla coil and ball lightning experiment, and the functioning of the AC motor based on similar principles, the creation of a vortex through the 360 loop plan. You guys must have seen some video that is creating like a portal. Then we have magnetometers, maglev technologies, different craft utilizing electromagnetic levitation. Also, blimps and aerostats, all derived from the same electromagnetic foundations. Also, natural entities such as bees and bumblebees resonate at specific frequencies, showing the influence of electromagnetism in biological systems. Additionally, additionally, phenomena like aurora borealis and australis also is says prove the same thing, right? Like compass readings, the sundial operations contribute to the claim of the Earth's dynamic are primarily shaped by electromagnetic forces rather than gravity. Okay. Tune, you got a minute to rebut. Oh, okay. I when uh sorry that that was just kind of a list of, of claims. I I I know it, it said claims, but but uh, I think the, the instructions from Jaren were to have uh, supporting evidence for it. But uh, anyway, that's just a bunch of claims. I look forward to uh, evidence supporting them. Okay. All right. Uh, oh, okay. No, go ahead. You can or, go back. You can, you can talk. You can have a yeah. I'll set the clock for three minutes. Go ahead. No, it's okay. We go to the next one. All right. Okay. I have, we can continue that. <clears throat> You've got uh, your second claim. Mike. All right. Sharing? Give me a second. I'm going to share. Okay. Uh, this is a celestial navigation. I'll probably, I'll probably have to also take take my extra minute. I'll, but I'll, I'll go over uh, quickly here. Um, first, first thing is that uh, Euclid has Book Three, Proposition 18. You can get a tangent to a curve. Not a problem. Here is uh, when you when you do celestial navigation, you're sighting between the horizon and the the object there, which is uh, line uh, angle A in this diagram, and uh, the line A from the eye out to the 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 uh, celestial object is parallel to the line that goes down to that circle there, and so to get the the particular angle you're interested in is you want the departure from vertical. What's well, alpha in this one at the top there? So you just subtract from 90 and you subtract the dip angle. And that gives you that uh, departure from vertical. You use that, which um, along with the known radius of the Earth and the known linear distance across the surface of the Earth by um, um, for different uh, degrees of change, and you plot their position using. Uh, the nautical ephemeris. This is another ephemeris that's on screen there. You can see 1850 on the left, 1900 in the middle, and 2017 on the right. The positions, the GPs of each star, that's a, uh, the point directly beneath the star, is known for any moment of the year. And uh, if you know what time it is, so you need a good uh, timepiece, then uh, you can figure out what position it is at at the moment that you made the sighting. Then you can do what's called a uh, um, circle of equal altitude, equal altitude being the elevation, the uh, angular altitude, not the linear altitude. And so everywhere on that circle on the right there is the same, has the same angular ele elevation 
to the star, which is in the center, the GP of the star is in the center. By measuring multiple circles of equal altitude, you can see that they intersect in a certain spot. And in this, uh, we have two circles there. They intersect in two spots. If you have a third, they intersect in a single spot. You want the extra so minute? So you can isolate where, where you are. Then you use site reduction tables, which are pre-calculated to make it easier on a ship in the days of yore when fast electronic calculators didn't exist. These tables use spherical geometry and the radius of the Earth to, to calculate them. The fact that this process works is unchallenged proof that the Earth is a globe. I have a $10,000 challenge. It turned two years old this month, uh, mc2.net slash uh, 10k sextant v2 or just go to the website there you'll find it right there on the right side is a a sample uh star angle measurements i can get the position of the observer using the globe two years no flat earther has has been able to get the position using flat earth and not using the globe so um this is unchallenged and it's got ten thousand dollars to reward anybody that that might give it a, a shot and find that it's correct there you go. Okay, you cool. got uh, your okay. Cut. Okay, that was just uh, some drawings, right? Uh, all the navigations they use or digital or paper form pre-planned pre routes and different methods which are based on a flat surface and are challenged to demonstrate the same calculation on a spherical model. Right, you speak about uh, sextants, right? The sextant needs the horizon as a straight line for its measurement, and also the one from the star, right? And that and that imaginary arc is for the perception. It's not proving anything of a globe, right? Bika, so have you done? Uh, have you done? Let, let, me, she's got let, me, let me continue. Okay, yeah, sorry, yeah. Sorry. throughout millennium tool like compasses, sextants, sundials, gyros, charts, bearings, and celestial bodies have been utilized for navigation, right? This comprehensive approach considers the horizon and the constellation for location, measurement, and direction in both maritime and aviation contexts. Even units like knots you, you commonly want an extra used minute? at sea, yep. Even a unit like knots commonly used at sea find their counterparts on the land. Emphasizing the measuring distance in longitude and latitude is just another method of measurement. It's nothing proving of a globe if they're using the knots. Contrary to the common belief that these traditional nav navigation tools prove Earth's spherity, the digital version of this technology do not inherently support the notion of the spherical Earth. I could go on into and explain what the whole GPS thing is all about but yep uh, I, I can stop here okay. all right because i don't have time i'm gonna put right. three minutes on this clock you can just go back and forth if you have more things to say about that or all right move on. go ahead all right bika have you ever done celestial navigation i don't need to say I do celestial navigation i have done a lot of research like i'm not a, i don't fly a plane right but i know uh, a lot of uh, aviation and about navigation i've, I've done documentaries i've done interviews and a lot of discussions well, I, I, about these instruments yeah sure, go sure. ahead so i i have done celestial navigation okay and i so right. i know how celestial navigation is done so when you tell me how celestial navigation is done but you've never done it and i have done it um and i know how it's done then when when you say make claims about it and it's not true because i know it because i've done it so it uses the globe there is no flat earth model in celestial navigation the celestial navigation isn't just about doing routes it's about getting your so position wh so why don't based you explain on where me you, based on yeah, the so, measurements so why don't you explain me how gps work uh, and i'm going to tell you how it works in on our model go ahead i, I i'm not talking about yeah, you uh, no, GPS. you are you no. the topic you are is using, celestial navigation what kind of instruments are you using other than sextant well in celestial navigation you can use yes. a sextant or a theodolite yeah. or other ways to measure the angles okay. so it's so not I, gps what yeah. okay so what you were doing in in uh, like in the 70s right now everything have gps have you not uh, used any I, gps I can do it right any now. yeah Bika. i can but do it right have now, you but done that have you that, done that, that? and you know how does it yeah. work yeah yeah, yeah. i yeah. have i have it's not that hard I, I i bought a book i learned how to do it it goes yeah. through the process it shows you how to use the site reduction tables 
Um, I've looked into the site reduction tables to see how they're generated. It uses the Haversine formula and the radius of the globe. No, if you're saying you know about celestial navigation, you should know exactly how the analog stuff works and the digital stuff works. Okay, you are saying, you're claiming that you are doing navigation, but you're not capable to explain how the bearings and everything are done and the horizon is taken into account, even yeah, though you might feel it's not. That. Oh, yeah, go ahead. So how, how the horizon is taken into account? Well, one of the things that you do that you need to do is you need to take into account the dip of the horizon. That's based on the radius of the Earth and your elevation. And so when you're at higher elevation, it can increase your your um, the amount of the dip that you need to re, re, uh, sub, uh, subtract from it. So if you're at if you're on the top of a of a large uh, cargo ship and you're 100 meters up, I don't know how tall they really are. But you need to take that into account. So you subtract that. There's tables in the nautical of almanacs based on your elevation to to uh, to subtract from your measurement so that you can get the complement to get the deep departure from zenith. Okay, <clears throat> Vika, you want to go with your second claim, I believe. All right, you got two minutes when you're ready. Second. And if anybody has any questions for these guys, you can send in a super chat or a Rockfin tip or even a cash app if you want, dollar sign journalism, and we will get to those here at the end. Cool. The moon is not a sphere. We already discussed in the question, right? Uh, the auto luminescence uh, because of the UV radiation charging itself, right? The phases and the eclipses are not due to the shadow of the Earth or the moon, right? So, so this challenge... My second claim challenge is the unconventional understanding of the moon positioning, positioning that it's not a sphere and possesses auto luminescence. The various phases and eclipses are not attributed to shadow of either of the Earth or the moon. Factors such as Rahu, Ketu nodes, you know, there are different views of even the flat earthers. But for me, the magnetic element like is the is in play which is one of the more strongest, right? And which is supposed to be the Rupus Nigra, the Polaris, whatever we want to call it, which contributes to this, this perspective of that it's not the earth or the that is creating the shadow or the moon. The interaction of the lights with electromagnetism is, is the more emphasized on that, like leading to the creation of distortion known as Faraday effect. This is the reason. The Faraday effect is what is can be testable and repeatable. When light meets electromagnetics, create distortion. And that is the reason the phases is happening, not because if the earth or the other thing, other bodies are in the middle. So do you know anything about Faraday effect? Yes, yeah. Yeah, so that is the reason, not the earth being in the middle. Yep, go ahead, you wanna? Oh, he's got a um, minute. He's which... got a minute. Yeah, what experiments uh, did you have? Uh, can you cite that confirmed this to be the case? No, I am explaining what is the effect. The effect is called Faraday effect, and you can back check if that effect is there or not, or if there is any signs of Faraday effect. Light distorting, uh, light meeting with electromagnetics, creating distortion. That's it, and that's the real reason for the phases and eclipses. Yeah, but but what experiment was done to confirm that? But what experiment do you need that the Faraday go and try and out yourself? What is Faraday effect? That is a it's creating that effect of light with electromagnetics, right? And that is creating the distortion. So what we see the phases and the eclipses, the phases and the eclipses are are very similar phenomena, but on different time periods. Okay, the the eclipses are much quicker than the phases but the same phenomena the the electromagnetics is playing part in that okay but but i, I was just wondering when you know what what experiments were done to confirm that the moon is is uh somehow uh, the due to the faraday effect no I, I think you didn't understand my claim i am claiming that it's the earth and the moon is not in the middle or taking the shadow or it's nothing that like that. What is the effect? Is the Faraday effect because of the light and electromagnetics? Yeah, I, I, yeah. You, you re, re, reiterated your claim. That's that's fine. But what was the experiment that confirmed it? 
All right, we'll just go back and forth I'll on that one. So, so, all right, go ahead. Who's yeah. uh, you got your third? I mean, she's gonna go to change. little Pika. We, I don't know yeah. how far we're gonna get. All right, this. I'm just gonna we keep go. asking for the evidence. Okay, yeah, but 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 what more? What more evidence you need? That a scientific experiment called Faraday effect. What more scientific? What, uh, if you, I'm you claiming need, that, yeah. that's it. Yeah, All you right. need to show how it is the Faraday effect. Just the fact that the Faraday effect no, you, exists but doesn't mean reality, that that, but, that no, something but the ob- is the Faraday effect. But but the observable reality is showing you that, right? When you see the eclipses and the moon. But you are no. saying that. But do you have it, anything to say that what is that process in happening in your theory about the Earth being in the middle, just than other than claims? We you, have you, we have the North Pole. You, re, you reverse have, the burden. No, 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 no. We you have made the, the claim, Pole. not me. No, no, no. We have the North Pole, but I'm saying, but you're saying no, there is no scientific experiment to prove, or I have I done the experiment. I I'm telling that. you. I, just, the, I don't care if you observer, did it. Somebody else no, no, can do no, no, it. No. That's fine. No, the observer reality is showing you that, and you have an, an experiment. In the same way I showed you about the phases, the shape of the moon is not because of the shadow, the way shadow falls. There's another way to know what is really happening. And it's collaborate. It collaborates with the observable reality, the North Pole, the vortex, the magnetic field of the of the luminaries and the Earth. There's many things more. Okay, let's. You want to go on the next one? Okay. It's uh, you there, Mike. All right. All right. What do you want? Claim uh, three. This is my third. Okay. We're rocking. Moving right. All right. On. Hold on. I gotta share it. I like Vika. Vika, you're great. This is fun. All right. Here you go. Uh, uh, the horizon does not rise to eye level. Samuel Robottom and Eric Dubé both claim the horizon always rises to eye level. This is a requirement for flat Earth. Um, there's a Robottom in his book, Experiment 15, he called it. And uh, so I'm not going to go over the math, but I do have the math from my website. If you're interested, you can look look it up here. This goes through the derivation of it for flat Earth. Uh, I'm I'm calculating for 60, let's see, you know, for 46 degrees north latitude here. Um, the prediction for flat Earth, this is um, including refraction, uh, will make it higher or sorry, less. Re- refraction will re- decrease it. Um, uh, the prediction for flat Earth is no more than 0.0417 degrees dip. So very close to zero. Um, if your precision of your instrument is only to one de- one decimal point, you're going to measure zero. And if there's refraction, it's going to be less than that. So that's the prediction for flat Earth. Um, but what what is observable reality? Well, observable reality from 46 degrees north latitude is that there is a 3.3 degree dip of the horizon. This is from an airplane at at um, uh, 11,000 feet. I didn't I didn't specify here. This is for that specific 11,000 meters. 11,000 meters here. I said feet. I meant meters. So I did the math for flat Earth. Computed the consequences of uh, flat earth here for, for everybody. Um, both Robottom and Dubé uh, agree. I know others don't, but uh, this is this is the application. And uh, But I've got a couple others that all have the same thing. There's 3.2 degrees. Here's one that I did at 35,000 feet. That's the moon below the, the center frame there and the clouds below that. Here's one by uh, a surveyor. Here, this is both at level. And then here's the measurement of the dip uh, which is uh, seven degrees or seven minutes, seven arc minutes. So there you go. Okay, Horizon time. does not rise to eye level. Vika, you got a minute? Oh, hang on. All right. Uh, there might be some truth to that. You say that uh, the horizon don't rise to the, the eye's level, but it's not physically rising. Like it's a, it's an optical effect, right? The cone vision like that it creates a, uh, an effect similar to the sky touching the horizon. The sky is literally not coming down. So the same goes for the ground. It's just an optical effect, but it's a visible Sorry. and measurable effect, right? And for example, you can, as you showed from the cockpit view, uh, more than 180 degrees, uh, the pilot views, you don't see any uh you see that it's almost there, but it's not physically rising. That's because of the vision we have. When we are on an altitude, on a flat realm, that's physical geography is in front of you. If it's the Earth is globe, it should literally dip 
much more. So that ADI that you just showed. ADI? Is, yeah, the, the altitude directional indicator that you just showed to show the level horizon. That's I, I didn't, an I didn't show one of those. Ten. Yeah, but it's, it's the same thing. Was well, showing the level of it's it's an ADI. Maybe if you do, if you don't know, it's another thing. But the ADI and the sextant are the two things which measures this horizon. Two instruments, straight lines, used as measurements for calculating and travel. All right, on the flat rim. Okay. Okay, you guys got a couple um, of if we want to go back. And, and forth. Yeah, cause, cause so you said it should dip more. So can you show the math for how much it should dip at 11,000 meters? No, if it's, I'm talking about an instrument that is calculating and showing you that the horizon, that whatever you're saying is rising or not, is just an optical phenomena, but it is used for measurement and use it for navigation, right? Two tools confirming the horizon, hora, Horizon is horon rising, Horus rising. The word says that, but it's an optical phenomena, but, but measurable and detectable. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, if you really see on a cockpit uh, a long trip, you would see that it doesn't, only when it's ascending and descending, there are variations. If no, it's just on a cruise level. Perfect, right? So uh, that's my case. Two instruments, Horizon used for measurements and navigation. Um, all right, but you did say, you made a very specific claim. You said it should dip more for the globe. How much should it dip for the globe? Muted. It should dip a hell of a lot, like, you know, like a lot. There is no, like, okay, just a mad me... words here and, yeah, here how, and how there. Much, how much is a hell of a lot? Can you but give if me a it's number not for there, a hell of a lot? Right, if it's not there, it doesn't matter how much, right? It's not there. That's it. All right, Vika, at, at 11,000 meters, the globe predicts 3.3 .3 degrees of dip. So, you know, I did the math. I didn't put it on screen, but yeah, it, it's 3.3. .3. So you believe that the Earth, uh, so you do believe that the plane uh, dips its nose down, right? All the way. That, that's not, this has nothing to do with the dipping of the nose. No, that's but you know, what no, whatever. So, no. We're talking about the dip of the horizon, it not a different type of dip. Or whatever, but it, uh, but you're trying to show that there is curvature or no, anyway, or the plane or the earth. Something yeah. has to dip. Yeah, just if there just, is a curvature, yeah. something it, does, has it to did dip. dip. Yeah, yeah. It, the, it did dip. And, and uh, I mean, it's a, it's a measurement using an instrument that's specifically designed to measure it, and it's precise to uh, one tenth of one degree. So 3.3 .3 degrees is what it measured. The, the flat earth predicts 0 0.04 degrees and it, and the globe predicts 3.3 .3 degrees and the observation is 3.3 .3 degrees. So it matches observational reality. Is, let me just ask you a, a question on that. Is it, is that a linear thing? That 6.6 6, 6 .6 degrees would be 66,000 feet? No, it's not. Just wondering. All right, Pika, yeah, uh, we're done with the time there. No, if, we, if we're speaking about that, uh, there's nothing in the, even in the avionics which uh, shows that there is the correction being done for this, this dips. Yeah, the, there's, there's no dip of the horizon necessary in no, avionics. Or, or, yeah. or the plane dipping, right? Because the, it's not happening. Okay. Okay, Pika, your next, uh, your claim. And your clock is ready when you are. Oops. Clyde. Now it is. When you're ready. Oh, you're on mute. Sorry. <clears throat> Go ahead and unmute, and then we'll start. Okay. Your claim, Vika. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my third claim is ancient text, scriptures, archaeology, astrology, ancient technology. Most of the instruments works on a geocentric stationary rim. Like what I mean to say that the uh, the globe earthers, like they just took a flat map and put it on a ball, put it on a stand, and they're calling it a model, right? This is what they are doing. They they don't want to uh, acknowledge the ancients. Like you know, if we give the handicap to the globes for five hundred years, if, even though it's very less. It's just a new kid on the block, right? What do you think that we didn't have science, maths, technologies, and way to do everything that all the construction that is aligned to to the constellations and to the north 
this all happened before the globe earth came into even the globe earth idea came into being all right so uh, how come they they don't want to see that they have been indoctrinated by the fake timeline like you know the the pyramids the mayan pyramids the stonehenge the temples all are aligned to the constellation luminaries stars ley lines to the polaris you can see analemas you know this there are points of solstices with marks with different uh, archaeological sites. They work as calendars. Timekeeping is done. They work as markers to the, to the constellation above. All this science, high-tech construction, you can't be even done today, right? That's aligned to a geocentric, a stationary astronomy, right? Coming for a few hundred years and saying this is the truth, it's not working. That's it for a third claim. Okay. A minute to rebut. Two. Um, okay. And kind of similar to the previous, uh, you, you made a bunch of claims. And then, of course, the, the next part after you make a claim is is the um, is the part where you, you, you bring the evidence supporting the claim and then you describe how the claim and the evidence are, are – uh, connected that's called the warrant the warrant is then what you'd say to connect the evidence to the claim but you didn't bring the evidence you just stated the claims so um maybe bring the warrant and the evidence and then kind of link them together um that's how, how that's done so okay so do you need any evidence that the pyramids were built before the globe came into being and all how they are aligned with different constellations right yeah, how yeah. the match show, yeah 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 no, show no, how they're aligned me, with different me, constellations let, let me and there was no navigation right there was no culture there was no science there was no art right everything was much more evolved than what what the majority of the mass indoctrinated think because of the fake timelines that have been given to them right there are you're saying that i'm not pointing to evidence how you can go and check how these things uh, align with on a on a equinox on solstices and different uh, the luminaries and when they come it's it's mind-boggling even it's not possible today right so and you're gonna say that the the astronomy or the true cosmology is what they all believed in all the ancient cosmologies believe in a flat earth stationary creation story like thousands of years before the earth didn't existed right right and there was no nothing there was no evolution there was no technology there was no civilization right that's what he thought yeah that's the reason but yep um, yes, I, yes, I, I do expect that you would have evidence. So if you think that, uh, uh, the pyramids are connected to, to are aligned, then, then show that. Yeah, definitely show it. Sure. You can just go and have a, uh, see how they align with the, with the true North and what other dimensions of the, of the pyramids, how it go, it explains all that all the maths is there to show that it's the representation of the hemisphere the northern hemisphere the only hemisphere that exists cool, cool. Bring that's it only one of them that's only one of them but there are many but there Can are you many. Share your screen just like put it up on your screen yeah well i i need to share the pyramids and the aztec and mayas and, and the yeah. temples yeah, yeah absolutely 100 percent. Yeah. you need to everybody knows that yeah that, I don't that's need to... that's the standard way the standard prop part of a debate you have your claim your evidence your warrant all you've done is the claim no evidence no warrant yet I don't need to prove evidence that the how how these things aligns with everything and how it's stationary. Yes, you stationary. totally Get do. It. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Because they work. Do. No, because they work as markers to one another. You don't want to understand. So you said. They, yeah. No, because evidence. We, then yeah, that's but the next part. Yeah, but your your senses. You're not seeing your senses and observer reality. That right, one you don't want to take into account. Ever sensed the pyramids? Yeah, I've no, never been about, there, so you need no, to no, show no, that. No, 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 no. It's not about sensing the pyramid. You don't have sense that what could move and what not. With what other different on the ley lines, how they are made, right? And how the, the analemma, the how this calendar. Dude, we're, yeah, we're, we're what going is Stonehenge? Everywhere now. Yeah, what is Stonehenge? What is Stonehenge? Can you tell me what is Stonehenge? Uh, it's a bunch of rocks in a circle. Yeah, that's a, that's what that's what you think. These are ancient calendars, my brother. Yeah, this is a thing. Okay. All right. Oh, yeah, I mean, Stonehenge is pretty cool how it, it lines up no, on, on certain days of the year. I love that. No, but it had a lot of more calculation. It's just half half ruined up. But these were real-time keeping. No, no, no. These were real-time keeping devices. 
these were real timekeeping devices made in stone and these this is just one of them okay they are all around the so different kinds but their function are the same right to, uh, to control to observe timekeeping with the luminaries and showing what is really stationary and what and the cycles that it counts right there are so many other cycles these the the time key with that observations but that yeah that's too much science maybe for you <laughs> your fourth like, claim you, you, you didn't do any science yet <laughs> all right all right my fourth claim yes right okay. all right let me when you're ready. do i have any any uh any you can always use your two-minute takeover all right i might have to i might have to do that all right all right Gravity is my my final one here. Gravity predicts the downward acceleration. Um, gravimeters are precision accelerometers that measure the downward acceleration to who nine or more digits. Uh, there's thousands of ISGN seventy one measurements that are publicly available. Uh, nobody needs to purchase their own unless they want to confirm the results personally. NOAA, N-O-A-A, has a large list for public download. You can just go to their website, search for IGSN 71. Um, I did that. Here is a document uh, of the measurements from Minnesota. This is at uh, 43 degrees north, 96 degrees west, uh, elevation 1647 feet. That's near Worthington, Minnesota. And the downward acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared. Uh, there's, there's where it is. Then, uh, so using gravity, the Earth's rotation, or Earth's radius, and elevation to predict the downward acceleration is what I'm going to do right now. So this is computing the consequences. This is this is a hypothesis, and I'm going to test it. So based on actual measurements. So we'll go through the, the uh, prediction, and then I'll show you the measurement. So we're going to start by using the law of gravitational attraction, F equals G M1, M2 over R squared. And then we're going to use the second law of motion, F equals MA. And we're going to, we're interested in the acceleration. So we're just going to solve for acceleration. So A equals G M1 over R squared. M1 is the mass of the earth, uh, which has been measured. So I'll put that in. Uh, th that, that formula on the bottom, that's the formula for the gravitational field. Uh, then the other fun um, um, formula we need is a centrifugal acceleration. There it is, A equals B squared over R. There's our two formulas on screen. So uh, IGSN 71 measurements for a mountain on Kauai, Hawaii are publicly available. And uh, the location you want your two is minutes? 20, 22 degrees north latitude, 159 or 160 degrees give me your two minutes. west latitude, elevation 1130 meters. The distance to the center of the globe using WGS 84 is 6,000 or 6 million 376,255.1 meters. And the tangential speed is 1,500 kilometers per hour. So the predicted, using those formulas, the predicted gravitational formula is 9.804 meters per second squared. The, the predicted centrifugal acceleration is 0 0.29, 0 0.029. And the total predicted downward acceleration, 9.77 meters per second squared down. That's the prediction for the globe. What's the actual observation? The actual observation is 9.78, a difference of 0 0.01 meters per second squared. And it's a 0.15% difference in calculation. So we have a good confirmation of the, uh, the prediction for the globe to the observation for the globe. I've never seen anybody produce a prediction for flat earth, but I have a $10,000 challenge. Should everybody, anyone ever want to do it? Um, nobody has yet even uh, attempted this one, but how does your replacement for gravity produce the downward 9.8 meters per second squared downward acceleration? You could be the one to get $10,000 if you did it. There you go. All right, that's it, Jaren. Thank you. Uh, Vika, you got a minute to rebut that you're on mute, though. Okay. Just a second. Oh, and you also have one more two minute to use if you want. Vika and Tune, you are empty. Okay. The assertion that mass attracts mass within the gravitational theory may face challenges when uncontrolled electrostatics interactions are taken into account. 
For example, the Cavendish experiment measuring gravitational attraction between lead balls could be influenced by electrostatics interactions, potentially leading to fluctuations in electromagnetic energies. So the Cavendish experiment, they try to read it, uh, do it in a more modern high-tech instrument and it's not working, right? You are challenging and offering 10,000. Why don't you look into the modern reproduction of the Cavendish experiment? It's off by out of the park. And which is done by, by the way, it is done by International Office of Weights and Measures, all right? Articles would be, could be found in Scientific American. Okay, uh, I'll put, do you guys need to go back and forth on that one or you wanna go? Yeah, to... okay. okay go ahead. Um, well, none, none, of, none of my presentation had anything to do with specifically the Cavendish experiment. Um, but no, but I, that's, I'd love to, but love that's, to know that's, how much- You're talking about gravity, right? What, what are we speaking about? You're speaking about gravity. So what should, what are we speaking about then? Your challenge is about gravity, you know, with all those fake yeah, numbers yeah. there. Yeah. But 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 those numbers matched observational reality. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so that's a confirmation of the of the model. So, that's so how you, you are that's how you so, do science. So you are defending uh, that that that's right. Other than what this institution have done, and even they can't figure it out that it's right or not because it's so off the charts, right? But I'm gonna need the off the charts that you're talking about. Oh yeah, it's it's very uh, strange that you are into this and you didn't look up. You I you know very well. Right, the the newer re reproductions are not. I, I have a working. list of eighteen of them on my website, and none of them okay. are a problem. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Well, uh, mctune.net slash g. If you want to see eighteen different measurements of the of uh, the strength of the gravitational attraction, none of them that I'm aware of are. Um, they cannot said, find out of the park. They they cannot. So which find ones are the, out of the park? They, just, they just cannot find the, the constant g. They cannot yeah, they find oh, the yeah. constant G. They have it to no, four no, digits. No, yeah. no. Yeah, they do. They they certainly do have it to four <laughs> digits. But if they don't, then I'm just going to need the evidence. I know. <laughs> do you want me to go? Come into on, some Vika, of one do, time. Do you, give you want me, me to? Yeah. Man. Do you want me to go? What one time? Yes, you want me I to want go you in, to. In the, I want you to yeah, go. Yeah, yeah get yeah. it. Yeah, I'm I saying you already. Go and see or check your yourself. The newer ones I are not working. Did. So no, Vika, you are depending on the 1700s experiment. You have no, just I'm one. Not. No, no, you no, guys I'm have not. just one instrument that you are depending on and no, one experiment not. to prove your gravity and it's not working. What is really not. doing? No, no, what is really doing is measuring is electrostatics. That's what it's doing, right? Even <laughs> though you don't want to face it, that's what it's doing. Mika, exactly. come on, bring it up. Yep, yep, yep. What do you? I don't know what it, what you're even talking about. Oh yeah, for sure. I've read know. the I've read the ones for on my sure. website. Eighteen yeah. of them, they all agree. Okay, oh, which yeah. one are you talking about? For sure, I'm gonna that send you then, right? Out of the park. Okay, all right, that's fine. If you want to send it later, I'll take it. That's fine. I know it's hard in the middle of a debate to have everything handy. So uh, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. But no, there's more than just uh, torsion bar experiments. Um, or measurements, none of them that I cite on mctune.net slash G all of them are uh, specifically from Cavendish. Uh, but there, there is one I, I like a lot that is uses um, 13 tons of mercury, and it's not a torsion bar experiment at all. It uses a, a, a very different method. Yeah, various method, various observation, various experiments, none of them. Yeah, and they all agree. Yeah, yeah, and we're high high precision equipment. Yes, they all do it. They do, and they, Very they high. do control. Yeah, yeah, they control for electrostatics. It's, <laughs> it's pretty easy to control for electrostatics by just having everything uh, grounded to the same common ground. Uh, so then their their net charge is zero. But uh, if if it is in a, like in a torsion bar, if things if sometimes people claim that the net charge is not zero, but Coulomb's law says that like charges repel. So if for some reason they had a non-zero charge, then they would repel instead of attract, but yet they attract. So that doesn't that doesn't go very far with uh, torsion bar. Okay, let's go to your fourth claim, Vika. All right, my last claim. That's my last claim. Yes. Oh, that's the reason I'm here. All right. Okay. Yep. Whenever you're ready. 
And you got two. You got a two minute takeover if you want to use that to add on anything. Tune, you don't have. Okay. When you're ready. Yeah, just give me a sec. Yeah. Sure. <clears throat> All right. My last claim. Uh, the antiquator mechanism is a geocentric stationary level realm model. Like, take note, everyone. We have a working model that is a scientific instrument that's called a cosmograph. I could have put this as a question, but uh, so what is a cosmograph? And a cosmograph is a machine that describes the cosmos, a planetarium, not only predictions or post predictions, but real time data of the whole sky. All right, as seen above, real calculations, simple arithmetics and geometry, right? Done with gear, gear ratios, gear trains. That's why we spoke about the watches. So this is 30 times more complex, right? Gear train projected on a planetarium before. They used to use this to project the real time showing of the planetariums. Before digitalization, right? So the cosmograph is a geocentric stationary flat realm model, observable reality put into a mechanism, collaborates, testable and repeatable. That was one of your own, own words. Scientific theory without an experiment or an instrument is not for us. So here you have with an instrument, right? Uh, and do you know what it does? Uh, your view before we continue, right? I'm here. Uh, do I know what the cosmograph does? Are you talking about the antikythera mechanism or something else? It's the same thing. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm I'm familiar with it. Uh, so you didn't know that is the same thing? Um, a, a cosmograph is a generic term, right? The, the antikythera mechanism is referencing a very specific thing, right? No, no, the, it's the same thing. It's just uh, just because it's found in, uh, in Greek version, that doesn't mean it's a Greek technology. If somebody in the future finds a mobile that says made in China, it's not Chinese technology. It's just a Greek version. This technology is thousands of years old, right? And the oldest one is found, that is the antikythera mechanism. That's why it's called antikythera mechanism. It has a scientific name that is called a cosmograph. What it does, yeah. what it does, all the observations in real time, from eclipses to time to everything you could imagine that is happening there, 30 years, for every luminaries, there's a gear for the sun, the moon, right? You have you can see the time, date, month, zodiac, position of the sun, the sun, the moon, the luminaries, the phases, the color of the phases, the partial, the total, the equinoxes, the solstice, everything can be done in one machine, an analog machine, no digital CGI, because all the digital comes from the analog, right? We didn't it just the analog, the digital just didn't manifest it in itself into this creation, right? Everything, all the calculation, all the way of doing math comes from the analog and from the computer, right? So this is the device which started and give all that base of calculations that is been done by NASA or the people of NASA, right? You need to have a start from where to make this calculation. And this is a device that looks like a dial, looks like a clock, looks the, like a flat earth map, right? So looks like an astrological wheel, looks like a bird chart, right? Uh, looks like the dial of destiny in Indiana Jones, the antikythera mechanism, yeah? It just happens to look like our model and it's doing everything you could even imagine or anybody could imagine, right? That's our model, right? You want to know people who have studied and investigated in this? Tony Fritsch, Michael Wright, Derek DiSola, right? So we even have a virtual model, right? This is a scientific instrument. Your model could be found in for $3 in a toy shop. shop. Our model needs at least a Lego version cost us more than a couple of grand, right? And a precise, high precise uh, device instrument of our model would, could cost us around $5,000, okay? We have digital, uh, we have digital models made by PhDs by universities, okay? These are no couch troll, internet troll making some video. No, no, these are real people by universities and academics who are working on this model, which is called, it's a scientific instrument called cosmograph plus a selenograph. What is a selenograph? A machine to, for a, which collaborates with the position of the moon, 
the phases and the eclipses. So all these dials, all these gears working in unison, showing real time data. That's our model. This is not a CGI. I, I won't even ask you for a model. That's why I was asking you to show me a digital cartoon animation model, but real stuff showing in real time. Because we already have both the model in as an instrument, as a scientific instrument, and in digital form, right? Totally verifiable, totally testable, calibrated to your location, calibrated to your time, right? Go ahead uh, if you want to continue. Sorry, I, maybe I took too much. It's okay, Go ahead. That, that's okay. Um, okay, so again, that was a, that was a bunch of claims. Um, you did say it it uh, it uh, projects onto a planetarium. Can you show how um, how that works? Vision before the digital version came out, this was the way they used to show what the real observations yeah, in the sky, show, in the ancient, yeah, works? in the ancient call in the ancient planetarium. Yes, yeah, can you show how that works? But I'm saying it's the predecessor of the of the planetarium. I'm saying it's an analog device that was used to project. Now they're using yeah, digital yeah. version, even as a, well, just, a, on I just a computer. Want to see how it works. I just oh, want to see how it works. Why don't, like, yeah, you, well, a, why don't you why don't you look for you, yourself how you work? Even you didn't know what is a cosmograph. I I, I do know no, what a cosmograph. No, 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 is, no, no, no. You you are you are dealing with a uh, you are dealing with a subject that is so important to you, and you don't know that there's a device that that's a working model which goes against your model. This is a scientific instrument that you that, don't want. That's your claim. No, no, don't yeah. what do you mean it's a claim? At the Antikythera mechanism is my claim. I didn't. I didn't produce it. It's just a version. No, no. The Antikythera right. mechanism I, can is a version. Quick. Can I, yeah, can I read ahead. something quick? Yeah. Go All right. ahead. So this is this is the debater's guide, it's page twenty two here. A uh, burden of proof. The burden of proof is the primary ru uh, rule of any argument or debate. It first requires the affirmative to bear the burden of proving the proposition. Subsequently, it requires every speaker to support every assertion made by that speaker because any assertion must be supported by proofs, those who assert must prove is a fundamental and long-standing rule of every debate. So when you tell me that I need to go do the research for you, you're not doing, you're not participating in a debate. You're no, just no, 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 but proof. you are saying, but you are saying you're denying that a device like this exists. I'm you're not, not I'm asking you to support your claims. The, That's all. the device the device mm -hmm. exists and the device does its calculation does its measurement does its precision how that's the we claim. would love to no but there that's not a claim anybody can see you can go all over the internet there are people who are making wood they're done in lego they're done in brass they're done mm -hmm. in yeah. yeah and bronze but but and but your claim is that it's a it's a some sort of a model of flat earth so that's no, what no, I need no. to see. I need to see the supporting evidence for that. that those who okay, you are, okay, okay. So I'll show you. I'll show you. Uh, uh, can I share my clip uh, screen? Yeah, yep. screen. Just a minute, and then we'll get into the uh, closing arguments here. Or the all okay. right. Just give me conclusion. Okay, uh, you're on screen. What does this look like to you? Looks like a watch. Yeah, looks like a watch. This looks like a watch. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't look like yeah. a three dimensional model of a flat earth. Yeah. Because you don't want to see it, right? Doesn't mean that it's not. Well, okay. where where is what's what's the, the moon? Where which one of those is the moon? This is this is the moon and this is the sun. Okay. And this is the way that shows as a flat realm, as our clock, as our map. This is a digital world. This is not as I'm saying, this is not some couch internet okay. troll so, who so made that... this. Right, okay. So that's, you that's see, that do you, no, no. Do you see that? No, no, no. Do you see that I, science, I, I art, and mathematics? It's from a museum. Oh, now you need clarification. Just you, let me go ahead. You see this? Every gear is represent. The sun gear is here. The okay. The lunar gear is here. The calendar train is here, right? Uh huh. Here is the back part, which which the sorrow cycle. All the eclipses that you could imagine are here. Here is another the calendars. And you have the front dial that shows and is exactly as our clock. You see all the moon phases, right? Okay. How does it look well, to well you? Well, then let's, oh, no, let's really get let's really get to it. Show that uh, see predicting that. the April 8th eclipse. Show look how I did that. Look at the look at that. 
What does it look like to you? Just this look. Does, it, it, does looks it, look like a, like... it looks like a watch with a bunch of gears. So, so yeah, but, show how no, that but... predicts the April 8th eclipse. No, but it's not only the eclipse. There are many other things that you well, are then, not then seeing that it does. Then it should be simple to show the no, no, April no, 8th eclipse. Everything, yeah. You, awesome. You had a show just one thing. Just one yeah, thing. Just, just show thing. the April 8th eclipse. Yeah, you're closing your eyes. You're being blind here. You don't see this. What is it? What is it here with all I'm the waiting for you to show me the April 8th eclipse is what yeah, I'm waiting just, for. No, just repeating the path the, the of totality not of gonna the make, April 8th eclipse. You are, <laughs> no, I got it here. You are denying. You are denying this No, I'm not. I'm asking you to support no. your claim. You know what? No, what you need There's to do. There's nothing you know? to deny yet. You didn't bring no. the, the evidence. No. Uh, 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 show the April a CGI 8th eclipse. I mean, I've got it here. Print. Yeah, just a line over a globe. Yeah, you're literally showing it. CGI yeah. right now. No, Mika. this is the, Mika, no, this you're is you're literally showing CGI right now. Listen, this is made by uh, this is made by Vincent Moji from a university, Mika. a PhD. Mika, right? You're, yes. you're killing me. Exactly. You're killing yes, me. Yes, sir. You're right, complaining right. You that I have CGI it. when you're you just don't showing wanna see CGI. It. Yeah, you don't want to see it, and you Let's don't see here, right? Science, arts, and mathematics. These are real. Uh, oh, I love you, from Mika. the real physical instrument. These are digital versions of those models you don't want to see it but it's oh dude this is this is great you Mike, see the sun moon earth do you see that yeah how it creates right. the phases you don't want to see it for sure right, Jerry, no the thing is something? yeah mike you're up here with the uh you're closing you got two minutes We're in okay. closing. all Sorry. right all right awesome all right how okay can I well um this? okay make it uh i showed how how uh you can use the globe model to predict the downward acceleration for any uh, place on the on the face of the Earth, uh, and tested it against reality, and it matched reality. I showed how uh, the angles to stars can be used to to de uh, determine the position of the observer on the surface of the Earth um, successfully, and it, it matched the globe model prediction. Um, I showed what else did I do? I showed how. Eclipses are predicted using the globe model, and it matches reality at least up until the the uh, the most recent eclipse. We'll see if it works uh, in on April eighth. And I showed that the horizon does not rise to eye level. All of those I brought evidence. I brought uh, computations um, based on the model and tested them against observational reality, and they matched. And uh, I, I I've enjoyed talking with you, Vika. It's been great. Um, thank you, Jaron, for, for hosting this and, um, all right, there you go. Okay. Okay. The, the most of the thing, uh, it's my turn, right? Yep. You get two minutes. Okay. Two minutes. In conclusion, the evidence presented in the discussion is rooted in scientific experiments, aligning with observable reality and adhering to principles of repeatability and testability. The assertion challenges the widely accepted heliocentric model in favor of geocentric. The examination of various phenomena such as verification of compass, magnetic north Tesla coil experiment, ball lightning observations, AC motor dynamics, the aurora borealis, the support of the argument, some of the support of the argument in that context. The moon is shown to be non-spherical when its phases and eclipses are attributed to the light distortion caught by electromagnetic fields reminiscent of the Faraday effect. Contrary to the prevailing notion of gravity, it is argued that electric, electromagnetics and electrostatic forces govern the Earth with the stronger electromagnetic fields, like keeping the celestial bodies in their orbit. The electric sun is also poised as a local, including atmospheric particles and molecules, creating light, heat, and fluctuation in this field, leading to the phenomena like tide storms and earthquakes. Then we covered navigation, celestial bodies using map, chart, sectant, compass, magnetic, and gyro compasses. is a science that has evolved into modern GPS, digital maps, and navigation apps. The calculation only based on celestial observation and Earth's electromagnetic fields are now facilitated by sensors like Edwin Hall. The antiquitra mechanism is a cosmograph and a selenograph is a scientific instrument supporting a geocentric stationary and level realm model. The cosmograph in particular serves as an analog cosmic planetarium, providing real-time data and predictions while remaining unmanipulable. Ultimately, the instrument presented collectively challenged the prevailing heliocentric model and the geocentric stationary level realm, with the cosmograph standing as a venerable scientific instrument supporting 
the true Earth cosmology. All right, you want your two minutes or no? I'm done. All right. Okay. Let's go to super chat questions. Thank you guys for getting those in there. Let's see what we got first. We got no longer on a ball. Thank you very much. Two bucks. This is McToon a Freemason? Toon, do you want to address that for us? Are you I am not. I'm not. I I know. I know two of them. One is a flat earther, and uh, one is not. Actually, and then the, the a second flat earther is a. Um, I don't know. It's a sister organization, a brother organization to. To uh, to to it. So I know. I actually kind of know two flat earthers that are Freemasons. But you yourself, not one. No. Okay. Is McToon a Christian, as in part of a Catholic cult? I'm not Catholic. I'm do you find I'm just a kind of a run of the mill Protestant. Okay. We've got LJ says since he loves to focus on the sky, if the moon is bright enough to be seen two hundred and thirty eight thousand miles away, how did astronauts not get blind when landing on it? Uh <laughs> When you're close to it, you're you're only seeing the portion of it that's near you. You're not getting all of the light from all of it simultaneously. So the the, the Earth is actually brighter than the Moon, yet we're not blinded on the surface of the Earth. Um, okay, we've got uh, taking back. Eden says, if biblical Christians and others are correct, would you feel bad about helping Satan? Remember, you're a Christian. What will you say to God or Jesus? That is also yeah, I would too. definitely for for any for anything if. Uh, would would not like that but um uh okay that's good uh taking back eden says mt well make two share video evidence of first video of earth what the first video of earth share video evidence of first video of earth i don't know if he means first video that you showed earlier or i'm confused i don't know if that does he mean like First video of Earth from a distance. Yeah, taking back Eden, I will look in the chat and see if yeah. you have an answer for that one. Uh, angle of elevation, thank you very much for 10 bucks. Says when Globers say the horizon doesn't rise to eye level, you are measuring along depth. You measure level along length, not depth. Also, curved lenses in a camera will refract the horizon down. You wrong and dumb. <laughs> well, you wrong and dumb. <laughs> <laughs> nice rebuttal. <laughs> Uh, hot dog for sale. <laughs> I think hot dog sounds good. Actually, I haven't had one of those in years. Uh, McToon, the Earth's iron core is 5,200 degrees Celsius, but the Curie temperature where iron permanently loses magnetism is 770 degrees Celsius. How is there a magnetic field out in space? Oh, my gosh. How, Jaren, you know the answer to this, don't you? You can probably field this question. I do not know any of the answer to that. No. Oh, it, it, it's, it, 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 it is not the claim that it is a, a, uh, a permanent magnet in the center of the earth. It is the claim that it is a uh, moving uh, molten metal that causes it. That's the claim. And it's been uh, replicated in a lab. So, but if you the say Just, the molten, yeah, lab, the molten update lava is... your, your claim there. So. so the molten lava is 5,200 degrees Celsius. No. Yeah. It's, it's iron and, uh, and nickel and it's, and it's moving. And so the... it's, it's the movement that generates the magnetic field but the curry point seven seventy celsius okay what's that but the but the curry point is seven 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 yeah it has nothing to do with the curry point the curry point is is where a permanent magnet doesn't function anymore but this is not a permanent magnet it's a dynamo it's a different thing oh, okay gotcha dynamo yeah all right we've got uh that was it for there let me go check over here at rockfin i did see a couple give me one second we've got first uh jason bowl says oh 10 bucks thank you We've got Tony Coriolis says Zodiac taking up 30 degrees each. Is that correct? Question for both. Zodiac taking up 30 degrees I, each. I've never been into astrology, so I, I don't know. Oh, yeah, that's because that's the precision uh, that the astrology also works. Uh, and it's a device also used by the cosmograph, also device used for astrologers because it can show you in, uh, in present time data about that particular horoscope. Or zodiac and can do predictions, uh, past, present, and in the future. Yeah, it's quite a accurate. Okay, and uh, well, there's twelve zodiacs, correct? So, three sixty divided by twelve would be thirty. But I've also heard some people say there's thirteen. So who knows? Yeah, they're not precisely spaced, though. Gotcha. Okay, and then we've got Hubble's horror says hoping McToon can explain why the producers blatantly, obviously lied in the hawking documentary oh. 
in the Hawking document, we've talked about this, Jaron. It does look like in that video you sent. No, it doesn't look it like it. Looks like they they reused that same clip for when the 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 helicopter was was moving down and when the helicopter moved up. It does look like they used the same clip but played it in reverse. It's it's beyond that because if it was in reverse, then you would see it in reverse. They just plugged the helicopter into the scene. That's all they did. Because the water is the same. So if the water is the same, you get a, a fake helicopter. Um, yeah, but I think that's a pretty big deal, though. I think that uh, if we're talking about people faking things, to me, faking things that go off to millions of people is weird. All right. I think that that is it. I don't have any others. Let me check back here. Uh, any final hey, words for you, Tune? You can tell people oh, where they can find you. Hold on. Oh, wait. I, I, people in Sharon's chat, give him more super chats. What are you doing? He, <laughs> that's okay. he entertains you every night. You got to support him. Hey, thank you for that. Vika claimed a flat earth model. Any evidence from Danny Turner for two bucks? Uh, Vika, any evidence for a flat earth model? The Antikythera mechanism has been reproduced and uh, reverse engineered by many people. It's all over the internet in every possible form. You can find from Lego version that is cost a couple of thousand dollars to a real precise instrument can cost you more than $5,000 made of brass doing real calculation with gear trains, gear ratios for every planet, sun, moon, and luminaries telling exactly what is moving and what is not moving, right? Yep. Okay, we got Matthew D. Gregorio just sent a super chat. says, uh, Vika for the W. Vika, you got one vote for winner. Matthew, uh, Matthew's, Matthew's good at satire. <laughs> well, thank you. Anybody else want to send hey, any sat satire to Matthew. comments? It's okay. Uh, all right, that's about it. Tune, go ahead and tell people where they can find you if they uh, want to do that. Uh, well, they can find me over on MC Tune Live. I'll be doing an after show if anybody wants to stop by, come in. Uh, any flatties want to join, you can as well. And uh, you can see my pre recorded videos on Conspiracy Tunes, Tunes with the Z. Okay, we've also got another one uh, Centrifugal and Centripetal Research North Pole. I yep. don't know if that's a question, well, but maybe. Yeah, one exactly. is inward, one is outward. Same equation, I guess. Yeah, the North Pole. It's the importance of the North Pole is shown in all the cosmologies for the same reason because of that magnetic north. Everything moves around it. And that's what we see and that's what we perceive. And there is so much more to that. The different energies, how they work and they fluctuate. Tides, uh, earthquakes, storms, and many other, even the heating. So much thing is more connected because of that central north, the accumulation of the of the electrons that create the aurora borealis. So these are all observable reality that nobody can, you know, people could be a bit, uh, wanna ignore and be blind and take in pseudoscience and all the fake maths, but uh, yep, nothing can uh, deny the observable reality. And there are instruments, yep. Uh, We've got, uh, so rain from LJ, so rain falls upwards in Australia, question mark. Uh, only I suppose when there's really strong updraft, but generally no, it falls down. Down is towards the center of the earth. Thank you very much, Richard B. Gifted five memberships. We've got Taken Back Eden says yes. Earth from a distance. Actual video. Moon landing? Question mark. There are some videos from the surface of the moon. There are videos in transit between the moon and the earth. So there are some. Um, yeah, I mean, if you want to come to the after show, we could maybe pull a few up. We're trying to get a debate going, uh, a two-on-two -two debate. You know about that one, right, Tune? I believe the moon landing debate is supposed to. Uh, yeah, who's it gonna? Who's it supposed to be? I think it's gonna be me and uh, Austin. I think against you and FTFE, if I'm not mistaken. Austin? Oh, jeez. That's the plan. We'll see. Austin challenged me to a celestial navigation debate last night, and then he then he kind of ran away from it. How did how so? Well, he, he wanted to do a celestial navigation debate. I'm like, super, I will give you the angle measurements, star angle measurements, and then you can show the process for getting the position. Because he made a super strong claim about that in the Matters Now after show, mm -hmm. uh, that he can map out with perfect math all of the positions. Um, uh, let's see. I think I have, there it is. Yeah, he said, uh, literally have the exact perfect math to explain all of it. So I'm like, super. I'll give you the star angle measurements, and then you can show the exact perfect math to uh, to get the position. And then he's like, oh, I just want to talk about uh, 69 miles per degree. Like, that's not celestial navigation. But 
So he kind of he kind of ran away from that, but I want to see the exact perfect math to explain it. I'm on your share Can't screens. Wait for that. I'm on your share screens. You had three three documents up that you said were 19, you know, 1850, 1950, and then 2000. Yeah, the nautical ephemerides. Is that for, on your uh, website somewhere? Yeah. Yeah. So it's be, that's I want to add Polaris. Can I add something about slash the Polaris? navigation? Sorry, hold on one second. Because slash Polaris, you said. Yeah, those three thank exact you. ones yeah. are on mc2.net slash Polaris. Thank you, thank you. Okay. And uh, go ahead, Vicky. You said you had a question. No, because we were speaking about the celestial navigation. There's, there's a device also, which is, which I mentioned about very quick uh, magnetometer, which works in combination with accelerometer. And that detects the low frequency vibration of the North Pole. And that's how you can orient and locate. This is a magnetometer and this with the sensors, with Edwin Hall sensors, these all devices work. And I actually proved that it's only possible on a stationary level realm. Magnetometer, all the devices, all the GPS, that's how it works. I can go, go in more detail some other time, but that's how it works for celestial navigation, all the digital technology. That's a, that's almost like a, having a compass digitally, mm. magnetometer. Vika, put together a presentation of that. I would let you present that on the channel if you could put together an hour or something on the mag. What did you call it? A magnetometer? I don't think I've ever heard of that. Yeah, yeah, there's more more stuff there. Uh, I can expand on that and explain exactly how the GPS works. It's how they took the whole the ancient methods of uh, triangulations and they put it in uh, in digital format because uh, electric and magnetic don't work together. That's why in the mobile phones we have we can go on that if we uh, gotcha. program something for sure. Okay, love to do that. And uh, is that all I had here? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Tune, go ahead. Did you already say where they can find you? Yeah, I think so. Vika, you can tell everybody yep. where they can find you. I know you got your YouTube channel. They should definitely look at your documentaries. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. You can find me, Vika Drazi, Truth in Plain Sight on YouTube and Facebook on all the other platforms. Or even if you just put Vika Drazi, you can find me everywhere. Yep. And, and go ahead. Yeah, do check out the mechanical ram and the flat, flat in the curve mechanical ram that literally explain about the antiquated mechanism and this cosmograph. So anybody had, who had doubt because then couldn't we couldn't go through or, over it, so can watch the documentary, the mechanical ram. And tune one question for me: Is the South Pole the globe model would mean that the magnetics there are the exact opposite, but same strength as the North? Um, well, the, the south magnetic pole is in the ocean between Antarctica and Australia. The, the north magnetic pole is not exactly at the north geographic pole. Uh, but yeah, the, the, the uh, magnetic strength is approximately the same. So do you yeah, there, there's no there's but measurements but of the no, strength. No, no, the Aurora Australis is not concentrated in one place. If that was the case, it was we should have been only in one place, but it's dispersed all around the Antarctica. That yeah, is so about, that is not I wasn't a, talking about the uh, Aurora, I was talking about the magnetic. No, but that pole. but but that's that's the reason that that the it's created because of that force of the super poles, right? That is we can see at the north, but in south it's more dispersed because there is right all is south and you see the concentration in the north because of that because of that accumulation of that uh, whatever you want to call uh, the pole or the the magnetic north or so when just when, by, when they have yeah. south pointed compasses are those uh re magnetized the other way or are they simply the no, other tip no, is painted? No, every no. every compass <laughs> the compass, every compass, or, compass yeah. has two ends here, here right here every compass has two ends the red one is north and the white one is south yeah but it's always always pointing north not at south no. whenever it, it's no, no, pointing no. both directions simultaneously so you're saying the needle is the no same. no no the, on your model maybe but on our model it's always no uh, no, no that's that's how it goes whatever in is reality north, it points both ways at the same no, no, time no 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 but the, when you when you when it's pointing north the the opposite is always south that's how it works on a flat run that's how the compass works looks like a flat map looks like a watch right looks like a dial right so you're saying, Tune, that you could flip that in the compass if you were able to get into it and nothing would change? Okay, I, mean, I, I can give an example what is happening. You know, the you VORs the on the plane, the VORs is like a, a spoke, a wheel of a spoke that expands in all directions in 360. That's how the plane goes and follow, jump from VR to VR. That's how they navigate. And that's 
stand on a straight line. The plane doesn't know if it's going north, south or south, north. It's just traveling in a straight line because of that compass and to the readings around that and how they navigate. Okay. All right. Well, Jared, to answer, to answer your question, the, the only reason why they have uh, compasses for the Southern Hemisphere is because of magnetic inclination. Inclination is the angle of the magnetic field. And uh, when you when your needle is near an incl inclination that that's uh, steep, then they, they weigh the other end of it so that it doesn't bind against the bottom. So in the North Pole, in the Northern Hemisphere, the inclination will pull the north end down. So the south end is weighted and it's that's the opposite in the southern hemisphere. But there are international compasses that are that have a different gimbal that don't need that, but they're more expensive to manufacture. Okay, so they don't just follow the field lines. They actually are there's actually an attraction. Well, they, they, they totally follow the field lines, but the field lines are vertical and horizontal. And because they're vertical, then when you get to steeper vertical angles of it, then that you you need to weigh the other end of the compass that are that are uh, because they're um, the cheap one. So this is a cheap compass here. Right. It won't work in the southern hemisphere. This is a better one. It's supposed to, but it's a cheap, better one. I don't think it'll work very. I think it's weighted on the south end still. All right, got you. Uh, wait, we got one more. Vika, we aren't. Why aren't we roasted by radiation from a local sun? If it's local, how come CME and SEP speed and arrival can be calculated with such accuracy? Because the sun, sun is a, the heat and it's a very local phenomenon. If you see, if you go on a higher altitude, it's cold. Why is the reason? Because the electromagnetic sun, the electric sun is interacting with the atmosphere and moving the molecules and particles vibrating. That's the reason the heat is created. And, and even there are gases and involved, right? Xenon is the closest to the daylight, right? We know that the sky makes in different colors depending on the on the we have different gases and uh, getting excited with the with the electromagnetics up there with the sun electric so that's the reason there is no radiation of uh, a uv radiation they say that is bad or something like that it's not really uh it's just charging things up but it's not really uh how they portray that is bad or something like this right no it's a very local phenomenon what i mean is that the the heat and the sun is very local phenomenon. If you really go up, it's much more cold. The more higher you go, the colder it gets. That's the reason. Because there's no atmosphere, right? <clears throat> and the other thing also could be the, the, because of the pressure, right? The pressure. Uh, that's why it could be that we could be there. It's pushing us down. Uh, adding to the gravity stuff, right? The pressure could be the reason that we cannot uh, go up. Apart from all the other explanation we have. For the against the gravity this could be one of them that's why when you say you know the elon musk himself he said that at the higher altitude the plane goes much more faster right maybe it's because maybe it's less pressure there right maybe it is yeah. it is because of less pressure yeah less resistance all right excellent thank you guys for being here I really appreciate it and thank you guys for watching we'll be back on uh friday for a journalism show and i believe tomorrow will be the debut of that music video the NASA man can. So the, look forward to that on my channel tomorrow. And I believe that that is it. Uh, I remind you guys, do your own research. When you do, you'll never again believe what you've been taught. 